Hey everybody, this is Brian at Obedia, and I'm going to show you today how to set up your audio device in Cakewalk Sonar X1. I'm using X1 Producer, but this is going to be the same uh, if you move between the other versions of X1. To set up our audio device, we're going to first click on Edit and go to Preferences. This is going to open the Preferences dialog box. Now, here you're going to see the available input and output drivers that you got on your system, and this is all going to be directly correlated to the audio device that you have connected to your PC. Now, in my case, I have a Personas Fire Studio uh, Studio Live console, so I have a lot of inputs and outputs. And so what I'll do is just enable the inputs that I would like to have access to, which is typically going to be most all my inputs. However, you don't have to access all of them. Uh, you can leave uh, inputs unchecked uh, unless you're going to be for sure using them. This is also the same for output drivers. I only enable one of my output uh, drivers and that's my primary uh, stereo output that I use from my console. Uh, this might differ for you depending on if you like to do different um, stereo audio mixes, uh, outputs, things like that. But in my case I just use the one. So when we've made that change um, and we can also take a look at the driver settings. Now here we're going to see the option to select our playback and record timing master. If I click on this pull down menu I'm going to see the option to select uh, any of the currently available audio input and output devices that are connected to my system. So you usually want your playback and record timing masters to be the same. Uh, so that's going to be the same audio device that you have connected up to your PC. Now if you uh, want to here, and if you can, you will be able to make changes to the uh, the buffer size. Now sometimes this is going to be done through the ASIO panel for the audio device that you have connected to your computer. And if that's the case, you can click on that and that will usually open up the mixing panel or the settings panel for your device. Here's my Studio Live Universal Control mixing panel. So. Uh, you can make changes to that here if you wish and if you are able to. Now we can also take a look at the playback and recording tab. Here we can select our driver mode. Typically you're going to want to use the ASIO driver mode. Um, the reason you want to use ASIO over any other audio standard is that ASIO is much more suited to multi-track audio recording. Uh, its latency is much lower and it is just overall much more suited to uh, high quality audio recording. So you're going to want to use ASIO. However, if your audio card doesn't support ASIO, which is going to be the case typically if you are using a built-in sound card in a laptop or a PC computer, something like that, um, when that's the case, you're probably going to have to use WDM. And in that case, you can make do, but you may want to consider getting yourself an audio device that supports ASIO at some point or another. Uh, I also like to enable share drivers with other programs right here, and the reason for that is that this uh, basically makes the drivers shareable to other programs that are running on your computer while you have Sonar open. I like this because sometimes I like to listen to Winamp or iTunes or something between mixing, and I like to be able to just go into that application and play the music without having to get a message that my audio drivers are being accessed by another program and therefore are not available. So. That's uh, a handy thing that you want to enable very often. The last tab you might want to take a look at is going to be sync and caching. The synchronization section is going to be reserved for MIDI sync and syncing up to external uh, mixing devices and things like that. However, you can take a look at the record latency adjustment samples section. Uh, here you want to select the audio device that you are using for playback and recording on your timing master. And here you can make changes manually to the latency uh, settings for this audio device. Now, if you are finding that you're running into a lot of latency, you can uh, adjust the manual offset right here, either to go up or down. And when you do this, this is going to change your, your latency settings. So you would want to make a change here and then do a recording and see if it makes a difference. If it doesn't, make another change and just kind of tweak this until you find the optimal setting. You can also use... Uh, the checkbox here that says use ASIO reported latency, this is going to allow the ASIO audio engine to handle the, uh, the latency, which typically is what you're going to want to do. Uh, this is going to make things a little more set and forget for you when it comes to your audio setup. However, if you have to dig in deep and make some changes, this is where you can do it.
Now, after you've done all of these changes, you'll just want to click on the apply button and the audio uh, devices box will open up again. Now you can close it up and you will be ready to begin recording and editing audio in Sonar X1. I hope that this has been useful to you guys. As always, keep in touch with me, Brian at Obedia.com or on Twitter at Twitter.com forward slash Obedia Tutor. And until next time, take care and happy music making. Music.